Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit. 111 is Eddie Luisi. Don't worry about her. I'll introduce her later. Okay, I don't have a title yet, but we're going to read through this and then we're going to figure out a title. Um, this is from Daily Word, My Story. With grace and gratitude, I am the designer of my life. When I think about the story of my life, I recall ups and downs, successes and disappointments, and events in between. I keep in mind that through each experience, I am the storyteller. I am the designer of my life. How I respond to disappointment or success plays a role in future events. When I find myself questioning my purpose, I can dig deep and call upon my inner wisdom. These are opportunities to reflect and make new choices. As I explore my identity and let my true nature shine through, I write a new chapter in my life. I may create a new path or discover I like the one I'm on for now. Either way, I co-create a story, my story, with God. So, Last week, well, let me introduce this young lady to you. Finally. What's your name, young lady? Uh, I think uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Or, or Lizzie. I don't know what you want to call me. Well, I know her as Lizzie, Lizzie Louise, but um, you could call her Elizabeth. Yeah, but don't you want to tell them who I am besides my name? Oh, she's my wife. Hello. <laughs> and how long have we been married? 20 something years. 20 something. 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Woo! We made it! Whoa! Woo! That was actually really good. I like I, I, I like that because it talks about storytellers. And the last time at the end of your piece from Friends in the Spirit Well One, you mentioned last week. something. What did you remember what we mentioned? So if you watch, well, first of all, how many of you watched to the end? Raise your hand. <laughs> I don't think many there, do. There's probably one or two of you, right? <laughs> right watch to the end. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of last week's talk, I mentioned about Cue the Spirit, which is a book that Liz and I are going to write together. Sammy, our dog, is trying to get in the picture. It's fine. Just let him come in the picture. Okay, okay. So um, Liz wrote something, because we have a private message uh, group uh, with different friends in the spirit, and Liz wrote something that was fabulous. And I copy, I pasted it, and, and I also put it on Facebook with a few pictures. But I was going to read it, but I think, um, do you want to read this for the people who haven't seen it yet? Okay. So basically, we're trying to tell our, our story. Uh, and it's called Cue the Spirit, because it's been queuing. Five, four, three, two, one, cue. Spirit, for a long time. For a long time. So about six months ago, Eddie started posting photographs on Facebook and from his from his personal collection of photographs of his 33 years as a stage manager at Good Morning America. And it's called A Different Time of Good Morning America. So if you look on your personal Facebook page, Facebook page you'll see these pictures. Are really, they're hysterical. They're just so funny because of what he looks like. He, he is the big hair, the big bushy very beard. Very strange fashion Choices, boleros. I was a little eight. skinnier too. Okay, aren't we all? Yeah. Uh, as you can imagine, he got a great response. Um, people love these photos of Eddie in action with Alicia Keys in Harlem or rubbing elbows with Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman actually said, I'm going to play you in the movie and I want to get into your head. He wants to get into Eddie's head. So after we write the book, you Jackman, Hugh Jackman, you're going to play me. You better. We're still figuring out somebody for Liz. The Pointer Sisters are in their bathrobes and sitting in, around Eddie like a big love fest. That was very fun. I don't remember why, but it was pretty cool. Okay. So after um, we saw this response, we decided to write a book. And like I said, we're calling it Cue the Spirit. And it counts down from Eddie's 33 years of service and behind the scenes stories and photos. And in my research from um, the book, I discovered that Eddie often sees that number 111, Friends in the Spirit 111. And according to the laws of attraction, people who frequently encounter this number are called light workers. Now, light workers are people who spread light everywhere they go and have the power to bring harmony to other people, which I think really defines Ed very well. And it's something we're going to talk a lot about in the book is, is his spirit and how he expresses that and shares it. He has the ability to share this gift by spreading positivity to family and friends to make their lives better. And that is exactly what he's done in GMA. 
on this set for 33 years. The pictures don't really tell the whole story, though, of his spirit. Cue the Spirit is about Eddie's ability to be the calm in the GMA storm, sharing his spirit and encouraging everyone he encounters on the set to share their spirit. Our intention is to share with readers why feeding your spirit is as important as increasing your intelligence or your emotional IQ. What we've learned after 20 years of marriage is that your brain can betray you and your spirit can and your heart can break. If you have built a strong spirit though, you can get you I, I lost my train of thought. Keep going. No, what we've learned after 20 years of marriage is that your brain can betray you and your heart can break. If you haven't built a strong spiritual connection, you can get stuck in a pit of depression and grief with no life raft in sight. Uh, so it, it's really going to be about developing your spirit and, and how that coincided with his career at Good Morning America and sharing that spirit. Uh, I, and we're gonna ask you guys, um, I developed a Gmail that's cuethespirit at gmail.com so if there's anything that I have done to touch your lives or anything that Friends in a Spirit has done to touch your lives, we ask that you, you write, send us a, a couple of paragraphs, send us, you know, 10 pages, but we're going to read through everything. And if it inspires us and, and, and Liz wants to pop it in the book, we will. Um, but we want to just know ways that, that, you know, Friends in a Spirit 111 is touching you. I also think it's really important to try and get a clear definition of spirit because there's so many books and uh, devotionals, everything talking about spirit and can be really confusing. So I found a couple that I liked. Um, number one, it's in our spirit that we have meaning and purpose in life. At the deepest level, our spirit gives us meaning and purpose and our spirit enables us to love one another. So it's, it's more than personality. It's actually your deeply inner self that, per, that, that you can get in touch with. Some people meditate, some people walk silently and listen carefully. Um, so your spirit is that, is that invisible part of the real you. But you want to let that invisible part shine, right? We're, we're the light of God, we're the light of Christ. And I say this all the time, by, by smiling to people, being helpful, giving a person a call, chatting with them, texting, um, just loving others, loving yourself too. You know, a lot of people going through a lot of stuff. I think, and I think too, one of the reasons I feel compelled to do more than just write a book about Eddie and his laughter and his fun times and at Good Morning America is because it's his ability to express his spirit so seamlessly that I think makes the book more powerful. Uh, we have a lot of stories to tell. Uh, you know, when we met and started working together, I didn't realize he was- At Good Morning America. At, Liz was yeah. the producer at Good Morning America. I didn't know he was nine years older than me. I didn't know that he was divorced. I didn't know he had a five-year-old son. I just, oops. <laughs> I just fell in love with this guy. And then I, I don't know, maybe, maybe by the third or fourth day, he started telling you stories. I don't know. Um, but when we were together in, in the first, the beginnings of our relationship, we had both come from bad breakups and we were both very sad and, uh, I love this uh, Rascal Flatts song. Uh, really describes how I feel about the blessings in my life and, and, and how Eddie is my, one of my, I was gonna say biggest blessing, but then what about my, our kids? They might get mad. That's okay. He's, he's, but it's, it's interesting that Liz is gonna read Bless the Broken Road by the Rascal Flatts. Because the Rascal Flatts, have been on GMA many times, so I developed a nice friendship with them. And the lead singer, the last time he was on, because they weren't on for a long time, they were on NBC for a while. But <laughs> whatever whatever happened with their, with their contracts NBC. and stuff, 
But I saw him off the side and, and we chit-chatted, we gave a hug and this and that. And I told him about all the different things that I'm doing in my life. And I gave my card and, and he said, you know what? He said, you have blessed me and the band for so many years. It's my time to bless you. And I said, whoa, that's like pretty crazy. Now, nothing has happened, but you never know what's going to happen. You know, God has blessed me. You're meeting Liz at GMA and so many wonderful friends in the spirit and so I keep on doing what I'm doing. This is the first video we're doing together. We're talking about writing a book. And, and it's like, let's see where all these blessings are coming, right? And we get blessed. You guys get blessed. And, and it's all a wonderful thing. We were actually inspired to sit together based on When Harry Met Sally with all those little <laughs> old people vignettes in between. Remember that? So that, that's why we did yeah. that. <laughs> this, is, this is just When Harry Met Sally. Uh, okay, so now I don't sing because according to my husband, I sing in the key of Z. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll just read it. Uh, it's called Bless the Broken Road. I set out on a narrow way many years ago, hoping I would find true love along the broken road, but I got lost a time or two, wiped my brow and kept pushing through. I couldn't see how every sign pointed straight to you. That every long lost <coughs> dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars, pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. I think about the years I spent passing through. I'd like to have the time I lost and give it back to you. But you just smile and take my hand. You've been there. You understand. It's all part of the grander plan that is coming true. Every long lost dream led me to where you are. And others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars, pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. And now I'm just rolling home into my lover's arms. This much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. That God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. I'm sorry. Oh, now I I feel so stupid. <laughs> it's okay. We've had we've had a lot of broken roads, and and I I think Liz is going to put some of those um, things in the book because it's not just all about me at Good Morning America. Even though that's what maybe some readers will want, but I think it's about marriage, parenting. They run parallel. You know, we have a lot of shared experiences at Good Morning America, and the people that we got to work with, and the people that. Their, their spirits really saved us in many ways. And I think that you'll find that you're gonna have fun reading about all of the ins and outs of that. And laughter is a huge part of what has been curative for our relationship and even for Eddie to be breaking the ice for some people <laughs> who are appearing in Good Morning America. We have a lot of really fun stories uh, about J-Lo and Prince and many others and that are memorable and always love seeing Ed when they return to the show. So I think it's gonna be a real gift and a powerful book and I hope you guys enjoy it. And and, and could help us, help us by sending an email to cuethespirit at gmail.com and, and whatever stories, whatever ways Friends in the Spirit has touched you or me personally either at GMA or, or in the neighborhood or in church or in anything that you that you know of, that would be wonderful. So. Even even sending us your definition of spirit, how, mm. how, you, like that. how you describe your spirit. What's ironic is I worked at Oprah, my old boss, Randy Barone, called me one day and said, I'm working in Chicago, come out, we need you. So I went out and we were filming the last segment of the show, which was called Remembering Your Spirit. And it was something that Oprah felt really strongly about. It was in 1998. And you can probably look on YouTube and find some of the pieces that we did. But 1998, Oprah was again trailblazing ahead of her time and uh, the importance of spirit. So check those out. You might find those interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna read something. It's called Healing Life. Through the healing energy of God, I am a new creation. And I was going to talk about Lent because this Wednesday starts Ash Wednesday for some of you. So I wanted to just share a couple books that I'm going to use on my Lenten journey. Um, but this, is, uh, this says, I am open to change. 
exploring new ideas or new ways of doing things. As I reflect on my physical being, I may decide to incorporate different life choices into my daily routine. I may choose to eat better, exercise more, and get more rest. There is also non-physical activity I can do to benefit my body. I can pray. In quiet times of prayer, I bring my awareness to the life of God within. This life gently, effortlessly flows throughout my being. Breathing deeply, I am aware of divine life radiating throughout every fiber of my being. I let go of any concerns about myself and open my mind only to positive thoughts. I give thanks for the renewal that is constantly taking place within me. I feel a healing surge of energy and vitality. I am a new creation. And from Mark 5, 34, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. Can I give them a challenge for Lent? You could give them a challenge, and I'm going to show you a few books and read one more thing, and then we're done. <laughs> okay, so I am a very poor meditator. I, I, I just I can't quiet my mind. So I challenge you, if you're like me, uh, and meditation is not for you, is to take five minutes or ten minutes out of your day to be completely silent. Don't talk, no radio, no distraction. Go for a walk or stay in your room and just be silent because our lives are so noisy it prevents us from listening and really take the time to be silent during lent make that something that you're committed to and you'd be amazed at what comes through when you experience that and if you're married a silent wife is really good Oh. <laughs> I'm in trouble. He's not in trouble. He's too cute. You can't. You, I, okay, you can't Sam, get out face. of here. Okay, so this is one book that I got from Unity. Fasting and Feasting, a Spiritual Practice for Lent. And it starts on Ash Wednesday, but I'm going to read something, um, and I'll end with that. Also, this book I got... Max Lucado, he's a wonderful Christian writer. No wonder they call him the savior. Discover hope in the unlikeliest place. And then this, this book was just hanging around at Good Morning America, and it said free, and nobody was taking it, so I took it. Of course, it's free. Why not free? A faith, fitness, and food plan for lasting spiritual and physical change. Seven Sundays. So this I read daily. It's a few pages daily. This I read whenever I have some free time. And then the fasting and feasting I'm going to read starting Wednesday. But in the beginning, they have some nice stuff. Now, we were both raised Catholic. And, and a lot of in the old days of fasting, you abstain from candy, chocolate, alcohol. So, like, you're always giving something up. And this has a really, really, really cool way of, of fasting and feasting. Interesting. Okay, so, so can you eat? <laughs> this, this is called fasting and feasting. I fast from judging others. I feast on beholding the Christ in them. I fast from emphasis on differences. I feast on the oneness of all life. I fast from apparent darkness. I feast on the reality of light. I fast from thoughts of illness I feast on the healing power of God. I fast from words that pollute. I feast on phrases that purify. I fast from discontent. I feast on gratitude. I fast from anger. I feast on patience. I fast from pessimism. I feast on optimism. I fast from worry. I feast on divine order. I fast from complaining. I feast on appreciation. Do you want to read these? I fast from negatives. I feast on affirmatives. I feast... I'm fast. Sorry, sorry. I fast from hostility. I feast on non-resistance. I fast from bitterness. I feast on forgiveness. That's a good one. I fast from self-concern. I feast on the compassion of others. I fast from anxiety. I feast on eternal truth. That's a hard one. I fast from discouragement. I feast on hope. 
I fast from facts that depress. I feast on thoughts that uplift. I fast from suspicion, but I feast on truth. I fast from the shadows of sorrow, and I feast on the serenity of silence. Silence. I fast from problems that overwhelm. I feast on the power of prayer. And, and now, now in, in the, the silence, silence of prayer, prayer I, I rest. rest. Pretty cool, huh? Those are some really good ones today. I like that. Yeah, so I'm um, fasting and feasting. So, dear friends in spirit, 111, one, one, thank you for listening to both of us. Yay! Um, don't forget and to Sam. And Sam, <laughs> yes. And <laughs> Sam kind of joined us. Don't forget to share your faith with family and friends and just cue it. Just cue it. <laughs> cue the spirit.com. All right. Bye.